Podcast 3 of the Pelvis and Perineum series. The Pelvic Cavity in Situ. This podcast is going to give a general overview of the position and peritoneal relations of the organs within the pelvic cavity. The pelvic cavity is the inferior funnel-shaped part of the abdominopelvic cavity. It is bounded by bone, ligaments and muscles on its lateral, posterior and anterior sides. It has the pelvic floor, a sling-like arrangement of muscles, inferiorly. Although the abdominal and pelvic cavities are continuous, they can be separated into separate parts by the pelvic brim. The greater or false pelvis, which is above the pelvic brim, contains the coils of jejunum and ilium and parts of the large intestine, like the appendix. The lesser or true pelvis, that part below the pelvic brim, contains the terminal parts of the ureters, the bladder, the rectum and the reproductive organs. These organs sit on the inferior limit of the pelvic cavity, which is the pelvic floor, and they project superiorly into the true pelvis and are covered by a layer of peritoneum. Within the true pelvis, these organs assume a highly predictable order, with the bladder anterior and the rectum posterior. In the female, the uterus projects between the bladder and the rectum. As the peritoneum extends down from the anterior abdominal wall, it is reflected onto the superior surfaces of these organs and goes on to form a series of pouches. If we follow the peritoneum from the anterior abdominal wall, then as it approaches the pubic symphysis, it is reflected onto the superior surface of the bladder. From the superior surface, it extends laterally to the lateral walls of the pelvis, creating the paravesical fossa on each side of the bladder. Continuing posteriorly from the superior surface, it then descends along the base or posterior part of the bladder, where it is then reflected onto the rectum. This creates the vesico-rectal pouch. From here, the peritoneum then extends laterally over the rectum, forming the para-rectal fossae on each side of the rectum, and it extends superiorly over the rectum to surround the sigmoid colon at the recto-sigmoid junction. The arrangement of peritoneum over the rectum results in the inferior third being completely subperitoneal, the middle third being covered only on its anterior surface, and the superior third is covered by peritoneum on both its anterior and lateral surfaces. This general arrangement of peritoneum is found in the male pelvis, but as the female pelvis contains the uterus, which protrudes between the bladder anteriorly and the rectum posteriorly, the female pelvis doesn't contain a vesico-rectal pouch. The female pelvis has the vesico-uterine and the utero-rectal pouches. So again, if we follow the peritoneum in the female pelvis, then it follows the same path as that in the male and is reflected from the anterior abdominal wall onto the superior surface of the bladder. From the superior surface of the bladder, the peritoneum is reflected onto the body of the uterus, creating the vesico-uterine pouch. As the peritoneum extends over the uterus, it also courses laterally as a double layer of peritoneum to enclose the fallopian tubes, some important blood vessels and ligaments. We'll look at this broad ligament, this double layer of peritoneum, in more detail in a later podcast. From the posterior aspect of the uterine body, the peritoneum is reflected onto the rectum, forming the recto-uterine pouch. It then continues over the rectum in a similar pattern as that in the males. So in the male, 
the peritoneum is draped over the pelvic organs and creates the vesico-rectal pouch in between the bladder and the rectum. Whilst in the female, the peritoneum creates the vesico-uterine pouch between the bladder and the uterus and the uterorectal pouch between the uterus and the rectum. So to finish the podcast, I just want to detail some umbilical folds which are seen on the inside of the anterior abdominal wall, protruding through the peritoneal covering. There are five of these umbilical folds. There is one median umbilical fold, two medial umbilical folds, and two lateral umbilical folds. The median umbilical fold extends from the apex of the urinary bladder to the umbilicus and it covers the median umbilical ligaments. This is a remnant of the uricus and this joined the apex of the fetal bladder to the umbilicus during embryonic and fetal development. Either side of the median umbilical fold are the two medial umbilical folds, so a left and a right medial umbilical folds. These contain the obliterated umbilical arteries. And then finally, we have the lateral umbilical fold, and this contains the inferior epigastric arteries, which are supplying the anterior abdominal wall. If you're unsure about these umbilical folds, then look at your hand and splay out your fingers. Your little finger and thumb, those can represent the lateral umbilical folds. Your ring finger and index finger can represent the medial umbilical fold, whilst your middle finger can represent the median umbilical fold. So in this podcast, we've briefly looked at the pelvic organs in situ and the relationship of the peritoneum to these organs. In the next podcast, we're going to look at the internal organs of both the male and female pelvis.